So here is a test procedure for the Dynaco PAS preamps after repair by D-Lab Electronics. Equipment required, you're going to need an audio generator. In this case, I'm using a Leader LAG25 an oscilloscope. I have a Tektronix 2213 and then a multimeter to monitor DC on the power supply and the output jacks. So we're going to go into the main procedure. First step is to connect up the equipment as shown per the test diagram. Your select switch on the PAS will be at FM. You're going to have no audio input. So you're going to turn the output of the generator all the way down and the volume control on the PAS is also at zero. Next, we're going to go inside and measure for DC voltages and then we'll get to the signal test. All right, at this point, you should have your preamp powered up. You're going to observe that the tubes light up and now we want to check for high voltage. In this case, it has a D-Lab power supply board built in, so I have access to the high voltage on a test point. You can see we've got 425 volts DC. If you do not have an updated power supply module in your PAS, you can measure this on the filter cap. Just be careful. Next, you want to check the voltages on the two RCA output jacks. And these should be very close to zero volts. So here's one. I've got negative 24 millivolts. And here's the other channel, also negative 24 millivolts. If you see DC voltage on these output jacks, say it's 20, 30 volts DC, stop your test. You have a defective cap or something wrong on the output circuit board. Stop, correct that before you move on. Okay, we've completed the DC voltage testing and that all appears normal, so now we can move forward with the signal tracing portion of the test. My oscilloscope is set up for 2 milliseconds per division time and 0.5 volts DC for amplitude. Coupling is at AC and we're in the dual trace mode. Now what I'm going to do is increase my volume control and we're going to watch the scope for hum. Remember, my audio generator is at zero, so we have no signal applied. So we shouldn't see any deflection on that oscilloscope. Now that I have that turned up, you take a plastic wand and you can tap the tubes looking for microphonics. You can also tap the circuit board see if there's any sensitivity. If there is, once again, stop the test, correct that before moving forward. So as a recommendation, if you do notice noise in the controls or switches, you want to use deoxit to correct those situations. So the D5 is for switches. So these are for mechanical connections. And then the deoxit fader F5 would be for the potentiometers. Here is the phono input procedure. Once again, connect the preamp under test per the diagram. The audio generator is set for sine wave output, 200 hertz at 10 millivolts. Now I'm going to adjust the volume. And we're going to observe the left and right outputs on the scope. Now we'll check the balance control. That is operating properly. Set it back at equal outputs and then you're going to adjust each of the base controls. Make sure that they increase and decrease and set back to mid position. Now we're going to set the audio generator for 2 kilohertz, which on the leader is way over here. And we still have our output. You can bring up your volume a little bit. Now we're going to vary the treble controls and verify that they operate. And they do. So this verifies that the phono input board is operating. It only requires approximately 10 to 20 millivolts, whereas the high end inputs will be up around 100 to 200 millivolts. Now we're going to check the high level inputs. In this case, I've elected to use FM as my selection. Audio generator is going to be set to sine wave 200 hertz out at 100 to 150 millivolts. Okay, same deal. Let's bring up our volume. There's my left and right output. Check our balance. It's good. Here's the base pot. 
Here's the other one. Now we're going to increase our frequency to 2 kilohertz. Bring down my volume a little bit. Let's check the treble pots. Everything appears to be working fine. Now you can repeat that test for all the inputs I just selected to use the FM. Okay, here's a couple notes. Number one, do not ground the audio generator or oscilloscope while you're testing the PAS preamp. If you do, it could result in ground loops and hum, which will make you believe something's wrong with your preamp. Number two, use shielded cable for the audio generator output and of course the leads going to the oscilloscope. You'll notice on my diagram I call out an RCA cable Y adapter. What I did was took a dual banana plug and I paralleled the left and right outputs. So this allows the single output of the generator to go to the two channels of the PAS. Now here's the last two notes and the most important ones. Number three, do not touch the PC mount components inside of the PAS or you will get shocked. Always use a plastic or insulated rod of some type if you want to tap on the board or tubes to check for sensitivity. Number four, during testing we monitored that high voltage which is 425 volts. Okay, I'm going to turn off the preamp. If you watch, it takes quite a bit of time for that high voltage to discharge. I have seen these things sit for a half hour and I've came back and there's still 100 volts DC waiting to poke you. Be very careful handling these preamps. Ensure that that power supply is discharged. All right, to prove my point, this preamp has been shut off now for over 10 minutes. You can see we still have 107 volts DC and it's just going to sit there until it finds a discharge path. Don't let that be you. If you'd like a copy of this test procedure, just shoot me an email and I'll get a copy right out to you.